We are live. Today's mission is to watch this. You guys know Nick and follow him on Facebook and stuff. And Nick was the first hire I ever made in this game company. And then this game company ended up turning into Build Box and expanding, etc. But we made a lot of games back then that did pretty good, like Jump Pack, Maze Plus, Monster Magic. All these games broke the top 25. And here we are now, five years later, and we still have a very profitable game business that is actually doing better than ever. Our last two years of revenue was more than the previous four years combined. So it's been a really, really good run. And using BuildBox, we've created a lot of top mobile games you might have played recently, more recently than Jump Pack and those other games. Like The Lion's In, Nick made a game called Sky, made a game called Phases, Wall Switch, The Pit, and a recent one I'm really excited about, a collaboration with Ketchup, one of the largest game publishers out there, and Bruce Lee. It's called Bruce Lee Dragon Run. I've so played Bruce Lee, a lot of the, here. not Andy Dragon Run, I've played Bruce Lee game, game app. Top 25 of the App Store. And we're really stoked about this. Recently crossed 65 million downloads. Never would have guessed that when we got started. What up, Dundee? Ago, but pretty cool. So That's a you can see, nice. A lot of experience in the indie game world. We actually started there and then got into software, not the opposite. And it's worked out great for us, but it's not been by accident. We use very specific systems to grow our business. And on this event, I'm going to show you exactly what those are. But first, I want to talk to you about the shift because the mobile industry, the app industry, has gone through a major, major shift. Things change extremely fast in the mobile world. And what worked last year won't work this year. And even to be more specific, and this is interesting because I haven't seen anyone come out and say this. When I wrote this blog post, I searched around. I didn't see anyone Asado. talking about this. But App Store optimization, I'll be the first to say it's dead. This is why we're here. I'm familiar with App Store optimization with ASO. This is why we're watching this. This is live. In this the is... early days, most people got downloads, including me, through people searching the App Store. For example, if you rank number one for fun game, then you would get a lot of downloads from people searching fun game. And this is how we got our first fun game. Fun game. Was through ASO. But then something happened. Apple made five dramatic changes, and this changed the whole game for ASO. The first change that Apple made was as more apps were added, search became diluted. And in Apple's defense, they couldn't really help this, okay? But let me give you an example. About a year and a half ago, Apple would actually show you how many results were for a specific keyword. They quit doing this, but I snagged a screenshot or found one, rather, uh, that had this on there. And you can see, this is a couple years ago. Man, I never saw that. 1,522 results. I never um, saw that. That's just on I believe them. I just, that's like pretty useful. Or free or something that would be really high traffic. So as soon as I can get a word in, I'll explain what's going on. They created a trending section, and I think it was a smart idea, but still, it lowered the search volume. Now, a lot of people, when they open this up, instead of searching, they're just clicking on something that's already trending. And I don't blame them for doing this, but again, it did affect ASO. Then the number three thing that Apple did is they added ads to take the top spot. Now, you already don't have a lot of screen real estate here that your game can show up in. And now well, that thank you, Dundee. A dramatically large portion of the top section you. there you have even less number four, i miss all you guys that's why i'm here algorithm. i'll explain all everything to show more mainstream apps oh shit i gotta pay attention no i think it was a really smart thing of course temple run doesn't really need more downloads but it provides i missed the first gosh users pay attention here one bit for doing that but it hurt ASO. i mean i already know explain number why four, four, aso doesn't work how many apps show when you search okay they used to have a setup sort of yeah. like this back in the i think it was ios 4. trey smith is this. you can argue you can type in one of the aso experts in the world if you don't know who he is i've streamed his stuff before this is what it looks like this you type in free is one of the luckiest or most talented game developers in the world this guy fantastic if you're the top game and this is one reason that eight ball pool and games like this do extremely well the rich do get richer in the app store because of search or you could say the downloaded get more downloaded. How well he said that. Prime example. How well he said that. In the free charts, and they're constantly 
in top grossing. So it's not that ASO quit working. It's that it just only favors now apps that are already doing really well. You'll notice when an app does shoot up an ASO, that is a new app. It's only going to be there for about a week until Apple docks its search power. They do that. They give like a little bit of power to an app for one week, and then they remove this power from that app, and it sinks down. So you can't build a lasting business on it unless you somehow get massive amounts of traffic. Okay, so ASO got tough. In the early days, app search is how people grew their business. Heck, we got our first 10 million downloads through apps. Not me. I didn't play this game. I do not know a single uh, person who is actively but growing. But I'm like got in the community. So. Now this doesn't mean that no one out there is making a dollar off of ASO. This guy there knows. Are some people doing it serving hey, really Kappa. niches and different things like that. Playing Shaq Fu, I, I hurt myself. Who's crushing it with ASO? Whose business is getting bigger? I love way, how he uses the word crushing. In other ways. It's all about yeah. crushing. Grow your game business. ASO Dying created a major discovery problem for indie guys like us, for small time publishers. And this is very typical. Once an industry matures, the early adopters they get in, they figure out some sort of system that's going to have their app or their game or their software or their book or whatever media industry it is discovered. And then as it gets their more book. crowded, then that discovery goes down. Okay? And this is very typical. So, what's the solution? Well, to figure out the solution, we should look at other more mature entertainment industries Hi, and see what happened there. Because these problems that we are facing right now in the app industry are absolutely nothing new. In fact, this discovery problem has happened in every other entertainment industry ever. It wasn't always App Store Search. It wasn't always ASO. Here's my specs. Something that worked and then stopped, and then discovery became difficult. And in each industry... Every media industry ever we good. has always spawned a whole new sub-industry to fix this problem. So let me give you guys some examples. Let's start with the... The music. shit he's saying, are you guys... How do creators of songs get their music out into a crowded marketplace? Discoverability is very difficult. Distribution is very difficult. And they do it with record labels, right? If you're a musical artist, you want to be signed to... Catalog. Absolutely, this is about Google Play as well. Absolutely. Fact, some research on Absolutely. This. There's only two this is both. who have ever hit number one on the Billboard charts in the whole history of recorded music. There's only two people to ever hit number one without a record label. One is pretty recent, Macklemore, which is pretty famous. But then before that was Lisa Loeb in 1994 because she was friends with Ethan Hawke and gave a song that she made to Ben Stiller. All right? Some random trivia for you. He yeah, that's random. To Reality Bites and it hit number one. That's the two times that it's ever happened. So it's possible, but it is very unlikely the vast majority of people who are doing well in the music industry are signed artists. They're not unsigned artists. And this is typical with every industry. How do the books you read make it to Barnes & Noble? All right, they go through a book publisher. Man, he's spelling it. Harper Collins. How do movies you see get distributed to movies? This is what Trey Smith looks like. Obviously, that's who we're talking to. The theaters themselves are going through film studios like Miramax, MGM, etc. He made a million dollars and he wasn't even a programmer. I love that story. All right, they are distributed. Selling software, he wasn't even. Game publishers, Microsoft. IRS came for him. Bethesda, probably pronouncing that wrong. Oh. Right, and you know what's funny about Bethesda is I am a huge fan of their games. Right, love Morrowind. Played Skyrim, Oblivion, all of them. And what's interesting is I thought they made Dishonored. I bought Dishonored and I really liked it. I didn't like it too. But I really liked the first one. And then I found out they just published that game. You know, a lot of the games you like probably aren't by the company you think they are, which is pretty fascinating to me. So music labels, book publishers, film studios, and console game publishers, they all serve the same purpose. <laughs> that is to provide traffic, to provide distribution. <laughs> And most importantly, uh, wow. to get the top tier content out to the masses. Now, the reason that I bolded top tier is because that's a really important word here, a really important phrase. You don't see publishers in any of these industries. You don't see record labels signing crappy music, all right? You don't see Miramax getting behind and really producing terrible movies, all right? But when the primary source of traffic for an industry is not based on any type of filtering. And that's what publishers are. They're filters for the top tier content. Then you get a lot of crap in the industry. I'll give you an example. When ASO was the primary source of traffic for indie developers in the app store, 
What did people focus on? Creating the best game they could? No, they focused on trying to nail down some search term. All right, there was a lot of really low quality content. You've seen it, you've been to the App Store and, and seen how much junk there was in there and it's cleaned up a lot. And I think that's why Apple made these changes because they didn't want people to find these really bad games. I think ASO was imploded because it was abused. And luckily the low quality- So this is what I've always known. That's why I never really joined the thing. And it it's took a while. Shovelware. It did mature. And it graduated to the publisher phase of distribution. But he's so really explaining we're it. Talk about the publisher phase, how to use this, what we do in our systems. But first, let's talk about all the app distribution Screen's phases. Screen's changing my. So we can go back in time, 2000. Welcome back. And see what. THC 007. Right now, in 2009, the primary way to get distribution or traffic for your app was to be featured. Now, there were some cases where you could be mentioned in the New York Times or something like that and hit the top 100. But that was really, <coughs> if you went to <coughs> business back then, it was based on being featured. That Smooth dog! Super scary, but again, it wasn't <laughs> difficult to get featured back then. It was a really small market. You guys and remember these eras? Were you app devs? Now. And it was a lot easier back then. Trey Smith is then the in man. 2011, it was about paid acquisition. I'm kind of jealous. About paid acquisition if you're a public company, if you're I am, making social well, games. He's actually not a programmer. Zone, He's a Zeno, producer. Or a supercell, and you're making a million dollars a day. He's like a salesman. You have a lot of money, and you can do paid acquisition. But because of all those big... He made a... His first program, he made a million dollars. For the indie developers, and paid acquisition died out. All he did was sell in one app a bunch of links to where you could watch free channels. He charged $25. And he made a million bucks, and the IRS like gave him a huge, huge hard time, but he... Passed through it was all legit. Games for he sold pi he sold bat we pirated links. Really good term back then. <laughs> but then again, this died out. And then in 2016, you made 62 bucks on a uh, forest. Uh, Just like all of the other proven industries, this finally happened for the App Store. And this is what everyone I know who's having success. I thought it was called Forest the Attack. I just want to make sure I got the name right. Is doing. Forest so attack. Maturing to this phase is a great thing for developers. Well, congratulations, so dude. And trying to figure out what trick will work this week, how I can get ranked for this term, or do this. You know this what I mean? is uh, whatever trick of the Coast week. Coast Axe's game. We can focus on. We're gonna play it on this stream uh, at the appropriate time. Publishers do all the heavy lifting, and we just focus on creation. So, how does mobile game publishing work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I'll walk you through the model now. First, you were the developer, all right? Even if you're not technically a developer as the game business owner, we're gonna refer to you as the developer. And you create the game and you own all the rights. And this is important, guys. When you sign a game with a publisher, you are not signing over the rights to your game. You still own that IP. You sign a contract with the publisher for X amount of months. Typically, this will be 24 months or two years. Sometimes it'll be three years, but it can be as long or as short. As Excellent, Costax. They upload the game to their account. And That's got to feel great. Marketing. Now, when this contract expires, when the 24 months or whatever is up, you get the game back and you can put it in your account if you want. Now, while you have the contract active, you split the revenue. And again, this is just for the amount that you've agreed on, the amount of months. At the end, you either renew or you get your game back. We have always renewed because it's always a good deal and our games are still making money. But if you feel like it did not go as well as you planned or hoped it would, you so this is the modern app store so publisher. Is that is not how business. it's always you been. Split <laughs> your money, the revenue with the publisher. Overall, you make much more on average. Not the size of the example. You can make slice. 100 it's the size of the pie. pie. See. Or you can make 50 percent of a much larger. Pie. I tell people this story all the time. We'll make the other 50 percent. Now I'm not saying that you're always going to get a 50-50 split. Different publishers have different. That's deals. pretty common, though. On average, even if you are in a publishing deal where you get twenty percent, you're going to make more revenue than you would going at it. Yeah, Costax, how old are you again? Possible. Why does it work like this? Why not just do what the publisher does? Because publishers typically will get your game much higher in the charts than you ever will alone. Since ASO is dead, if you have to go at it alone, you're basically praying for an Apple feature. That's pretty much your only option. And there are now 7,000... So do we get a publishing deal at the end of this video, or...? Apple features about 10 games per week. Sometimes they feature less. But if you have a publisher, you're not dependent on Apple. So now the big question is this. How can publishers get games to the top better than we can? 
Well, each publisher has their own story and they have their own unique ability. They all do different things and they use different styles of marketing. But styles. let's look at some examples. So here's how publishers push. Let's start with Trey Smith. Smith. They have the guy that's talking. And they we'll come back to catch up. Kind of looks like that uh, right? snowboarder. He reminds me of that gold medal snowboarder. What's his name? He has his own video games. I'm going to screenshot this list of publishers. They have great relationships with the App Store feature teams. Right? That's a pretty cool one. So they get a lot of stuff featured. I think they have over uh, like 80 games featured. Nanovation, they also are here in Silicon Valley. They have great relationships. Oh, he's in Silicon Valley. What? Social media presence. The interesting thing is they all do something different. So as you can see, they all have a different story, but they have one thing in common. What they do is not very repeatable. Not saying it's impossible, but it's not easy. It's hard to get 700 million downloads or have 10 million followers or know the right people at Apple. And honestly, for me, it is completely fine. I would much prefer to focus on making games and let other people do the promotional work. For me, making games is the fun part. So now let's talk about the other big elephant in the room hmm. question. How much can you make with a publisher? Okay, if you Google around, you're not going to find any answers on this. And there are two reasons people rarely answer this online. Yeah, Sean White, of course. Thank you. Game Duh. This guy looks like Sean White. About any game revenue because yeah, under how could I forget that? Our games. And part of that contract uh. says we don't talk about that. Also, game revenue can wildly vary based on many different factors. Any publisher can push out a bomb. Trey Smith, the guy that's talking, is like a naturally gifted app marketing genius. It's a really big sliding scale. Kind of frustrating. It varies greatly depending on the publisher. I learned from this guy. The viralness of the game, how good your game is, and how well it monetizes. Now, after talking with hundreds of developers and publishers over the years, here's what we've seen on that sliding scale. But please note, your experiences can be very, very different. These are raw estimates here for example purposes, and they should be treated as such. All right, so let's go over a list of general ideas for developer revenue estimates. Now, this is assuming you have a decent publisher. We're talking about a publisher with a good track record, some way to generate traffic and download. The mic changed. It's pre-recorded. game does bomb <laughs> it can still generate some revenue bomb even if the Apple bomb feature it, <laughs> if it's not in the top 25 they can still promote it to the previous users in this case over time with a notable publisher oh i am aware of that a thousand dollars i mean i don't know about your your circumstance right, now, yes i've heard that make less than this. if you're on like Absolutely. unemployment or something it's very dependent on your game and who you sign it with okay guys there's a lot of people out there that promote themselves as publishers that have no marketing sense that have absolutely no clue how to get games to the top. And if you sign with someone like that, it's very possible you could have zero dollars revenue. So we're talking about notable publishers and I'll mention some of those in this event. All right, now, if you have a moderate success, we're talking about a game that breaks the top 100, does fairly Look, well. Look, he's spelling it out. He's saying if you make under a grand, something like that, it's, it's your game's a bomb. Then Not the bomb, but it bombed. At 10 grand, you did all right. I love it. He's just telling you straight out. Is it going to happen every time? No, <laughs> but it's definitely possible. It's a general estimate revenue for moderate success. All right, now, if you have a top 25 game, and I'm talking about a hit top 25 game, this does not mean that you have a game that hits the top 25 for 15 seconds. All right, that's great. You can put it on your resume, but that's not what we're talking about. If you have a top 25 game that's there for a few days that people really like, that has good I'm going to buy a property in Greece once I get richer to make or rich or above poor or no. Now, I plan to buy some property a there. Game. We're talking about a game that hits the very top. It's 100 grand, your game is a hit. And maybe not even the very top game in the According to Trey Smith. The top 10 multiple days. Again, Trey really Smith. popular game and it's viral. You go to Twitter and you type in your game name and you see thousands of people talking about it. We're talking about a really hit game. He's had many hit games. He's had games downloaded. Not going to happen every time. He's had many. But as an estimate, we've seen that happen multiple times with multiple developers and multiple players. Three million. Okay. And if you have a unicorn, about three million. I think I'd be like pretty like let's buy shit. Stuff. Extremely rare. 
but now with huge publishers out there and all of this going mainstream, we're seeing it happen more. Oh, cool, bro. We know multiple people that this has happened to, where their game starts getting 50, 75, even 100 million downloads, and it becomes the huge app of the moment. He calls it the unicorn. Game. And if you create a game like this, if you make a unicorn, then it's not uncommon <laughs> for a developer to make over a million dollars. It's extremely rare, but it's definitely possible. We've seen this happen multiple times in the past 12 months with indie developers publishing a unicorn style game. So before we continue, what about indie publishing? Isn't that all the rage right now? And first off, I fully support indie publishing. I think it's awesome. There will always be the Crossy Road type game that comes out of nowhere and absolutely- You ever played Crossy Road? Road? So I haven't. Great, now I want to. Very rare. Even games like Angry Birds came out published. And then of course, after they got huge, they went on their own. And that's happened multiple times with games like Cut the Rope and Angry Birds. But when you go at it... No paper? Lottery, I love it. I'm in. Lottery, I'm moving there now. It's very hard to build a business playing the lottery. In my company, we're looking for repeatable success. And this is why we've stuck with the publishing model. I even like Euros. Great for us has helped us cross 55 million downloads, grow a 7... I like Tabuli, Grape Leaf. ...get games in the top of the charts. And here's how we do it. All right, so now we're going to talk about how you can Cabbage get rolls. your games published. Let's get into the actual explanation of our systems. I'm going to show you guys exactly what we do. So I approach this process from four key areas. The first one is I analyze. The second thing I do is create. All right, then we pitch. And then, of course, repeat. Look at this freaking chart. Listen, most people skip the two most important parts of this equation. Analyze and create? Instead, their system looks like this. They just create and then pitch. That is it. <laughs> and listen, this will rarely work. We do things in a unique way, and it works. We have a 100% success rate. Yeah. Games he, a lot of his we games, games man, 10 millions of downloads. All of them. Made All of them. That did not get immediately picked up, and it's largely because of the two things that most people aren't doing, which is the analyze section and the repeat section. So here's what we do. Let's start off with analyze. We'll go through He's all telling that. you how to get your analyze game published right <laughs> with this silly chart. The right publisher. So we the been a, to building your game I want to talk over him. Your game. Instead, you want to analyze what is going to work for the publisher. This is a stark contrast to what most people... We talked a lot about this on the early games. days. Then they hope and pray a publisher will like it. Instead, you want to reverse engineer what is working best for the publisher because publishers are extremely smart. <laughs> they spot trends and they create them before anyone else. They know what will be hot next year before anyone else. If they see something working, they won't announce it. They're not gonna tell you, they're not gonna post it on their Twitter feed, but they'll be looking for it. So how do you know what's working for them? Mm, how do they? It's actually pretty simple. The first step is to search the publisher on iTunes. We'll use Absolute Games for an example. Uh, this is my friend David's company, really good publishing company. All right, so we would search for Absolute Games. My friend David. We would click on one of their games, and then we would click on their company name, and this is how we would find all of Absolute Games in the App Store. He is like... Right, so notice that we're sort of... He is that game in IRL. All of their games sort of by best he, could, he converts everything to a system. Kind of he tries to make everything into a here. system. I see a lot of minimal polygon-based games. I see a lot of Build Bucks games, but let's just talk about the style. I see a lot of minimal polygon-style games. So... The first thing you might think is, okay, this is the types of games we need to send Absolute. Now, this is even if you did this much research. A lot of people wouldn't even get this far. A lot of people would just send whatever they were creating without any thought process. But Raleigh you know, Worms looks like uh, Earthworm Jim. Polygon-based game. But our research is not done yet. Now we've sorted by release date. Do you see any trends here? Interesting. It seems hmm. that the most recent games released by Absolute are not minimal polygon-based games. And I spot a few of the best sellers on this list too. Right here, they're all cute, illustrative, character-based games. We have Dashie the Cat, Flip Heroes, which is arguably minimal, but not as minimal and polygon-based as the other ones, and Rolly Worms. They're all character This guy's based. played every single app Picture game that was ever on a top 10 yeah, list, a top 50. We saw when searching by best games. In fact, yeah, Smooth Dog, you know, he's like, in a weird way, he's the master of shovelware. But I think he'd find that insulting. To notice. 
It seems that Absolute has recently changed yeah. his strategy. Or at it's kind of true. Different types of games right now. But he's, he's right about a lot of stuff. I learned from him. Free games and minimal paid games? Absolutely not. Last week they got a game featured by Apple that is a minimal game. <laughs> But we know for a fact PG, that PG. are trending with Absolute. Pog, pog. Also, this does not mean pog, that pog. free minimal games are dead. Other publishers still only release those. So it's always publisher dependent. You want to do this research on each publisher. But the interesting thing is this. Most people don't do the research. I bet you that a large number of Absolute's current submissions are minimal games, even though that is not what they are actively publishing at the moment, or at least the most thing that they're publishing at the moment. It's important to research heavy and make sure you're creating the right game at the right time. From this point, you should not stop researching. This is step one of many, not the end of your research on publishers. You would keep digging. It'll take me too long to go over everything, but in short, you would now find out what games were recently successful for Absolute. You would want to find out how many downloads those recent successes had. Then you would build a list of qualities in these most successful Everything's games. Everything's a system. And this list would be used them. during your game design process. Now you're ready to start building a game. But it's important to note, again, each publisher will have at least slight deviations in what they will sign. A game that's great for Absolute might not be great for Ketchup. And a game that's great for Ketchup might not be great for Fortify. Some games will have crossover appeal to multiple publishers, and others will not. Each publisher has its own trends, so if you truly want to succeed in this, you need to know what works for each publisher, okay? So, now let's talk about creating the game. And we're going to show you how to build a feature. Oh, no, no, I'm scared to hear this really one. It means that the game is good enough to be featured by Apple. I want to hear the now, pitch part. Not every publisher out there relies on Apple for traffic. Still, they're not going to sign a game if they don't think it's good enough to be featured by Apple. That's kind of the quality measurement here we're shooting for. So now it's time mm. to build your game. Let's look at the core concepts that you should focus on when creating a game for public. Okay. You'll need three things to effectively create a great game. The first one is unique gameplay. You cannot <laughs> rip off someone else's game. Oh my gosh. Exactly. If you do that, your game will not get published. I've always said games to publish you need a the unique mechanic. He, it, he's he's changed his tune, game. I assure you. <laughs> Innovative design. He was like, copy it. You want to get design cues from other games from success, but you want to do something a little bit different. You want your game to stand out, but still be pleasing. And this is a new one that publishers are really looking for now, which is great retention. Right, and that's why... Uh, how long someone plays your game. Not even necessarily a single session, but how often do they come back and play this yeah. game? Yeah. The more someone plays a game, the more viral the game gets because they're sharing it with their friends. Because it's That's why we want to make so our game moddable to kind of fix the retention issue. More ads. Retention is really important. It's always been important for social games, but this is getting important now for any type of game, including more simple-styled arcade games. So here's how to do each. All right, so unique gameplay. <laughs> while we want to use unique gameplay, we also want to base the mechanics on things that we know work. When you're analyzing publisher games, think about why they are fun. Yeah. Did you play the more popular games longer that's, than that's, the publisher's yep. other games? If so, why did you play them more? What about the gameplay was fun? Was the jump height too high or did it feel perfect? <laughs> Notice the controls and movements of the game. Are they complex or are they simple? Make or break it, the jump height. That's, uh... Was there invisible buttons? Was it swipe? Do the successful ones have anything in common? Also, focus on the frequency, timing, and concentration of the game. Are you tapping constantly? Is it like flapping? Yes, and I think we streamed that. kind of monotonous tapping motion, right? Almost hypnotic? Is it stressful? Or was it easy tapping? Make as many notes as you can on the publisher's games. And later on, you'll find similarities between all these publishers. You'll be like, wow, a lot of This guy has changed his story a lot this from the older days. Notice things that are similar but he's right. He's right, as usual. Question everything. Ask why to everything that you see, hear, or feel. Damn. Figure out all the elements that make the game successful and write them down on a notepad. Or in notepad. Now, borrow these elements for your game and listen. Borrow them. <laughs> of these elements I might give it back to you later. Heck, maybe only one of them will. Heck. But it gives you a starting point and it gives you a goal to reach. And it lets you base your gameplay ideas off of Trey data Smith. Instead of complete. He makes more money than all of us in video games. He's created a build box. 
you guys know the build box game engine game and flipping it on its they charge like 10 grand to use this game engine play, flip it vertically if the game has one and he's had many many games in the top 10 these many. little changes could be the inspiration that ignite the game's creation all right so now let's talk about innovative design the, design the owner immediate turn off to any publisher this goes for both art and user interface design. So make sure to use pleasing color palettes. And remember, with design, less is always more. That's not true, but if okay. If you have no clue about design That's and you do fine. not want to hire a designer or an artist, start studying the color palettes of games. Hmm. Check out the colors used in the most popular games by your publisher. <laughs> are they bright? Are they pastel? Are Pretty they good dark? point. Pretty good one. Thing? Then use this data and search similar palettes on colorlovers.com. This is an example of some palettes there that were on the home Everything page. is a system. I love it. I love it. I've got a Just lot of different ideas from Step by step. I've also used a color tool to get palette data off of other He downloads your hit game and runs eyedropper and then goes to color lover and then releases a new game. The original inspiration for this, this game, is his game. Nothing like it, was called Electronic Super Joy. Really fun game. I didn't know that. You can see here, I use Pixelmator, and this is the color tool in Pixelmator. Uh, and I cool. can find out the exact different hue, the hexadecimal color of the pink that they used. And I use this for original inspiration, but like everything I do in my companies, I model and improve the colors. <laughs> I don't use the exact colors. It's like permanent the result is subtitles. You can fill the inspiration. Of course, this is phases on the left. And electronic super joy on the right and i'm sure that electronic super joy also got inspiration from games like limbo and who knows limbo probably got inspiration from something else and something he else. knows his shizzle man he plays every game i tell you use any of the exact colors but instead more than i do inspiration from the hue the tone the overall aesthetic of the game of course you should base your design from the recent successful trends of the publisher my game phases was specifically built for ketchup also ketchup two years ago and i added a lot of white and brighter tones because that is what they were actively publishing yeah i can't use a platform so that's like graphic that. design and even if you have an absolutely i've seen it i've never game, tried it regardless of how great it is you still need to have great retention retention is how many users come back to play the game well it's uses steps this can be tough but you need to figure out why the best games have great retention this is something that all publishers started focusing on in 2016. <laughs> it tells you what year it started. The more retention your game gets, the more revenue for both you and the publisher. This is a great way to build a lasting relationship with a publisher. So the best way to improve retention is have a fun game. All the other tricks like giving free daily prizes, sending push notifications, and adding new characters and features, that doesn't matter if your game is not fun. None of that should be your focus. Instead, put all the effort that you were going to spend on that into making a truly fun experience for your users. Now, what specifically is fun? And can it be reverse engineered? Yeah. Seems like a this is totally relevant to Steam. For sure. Read the book, The Art of Game for sure. by Jesse Snell. Or anything. Learn about surprise and what? wonder and how important these two things are to your game. Sink into the philosophy of what is a game. Listen to this guy. Woo! Stuff. That's smoking. If you're new... The best way to figure hmm. out fun, excitement, and retention is to study it. When you play games, notice your reactions and figure out why you have them. Take notes, pay attention to details, and schedule daily time to work on your game ideas. That's really important. If you Billbox users out there, he's trying. You're using Billbox, you need to do it daily. You need to really be involved and think about this. Or if you have a programmer team or whatnot, you need to talk with those guys daily. The more you do it, the better I you get. Our definition is fun is uh, the one that I breaking rules. Anytime you can break a rule, that's kind of needs to be featured worthy. And that's kind of a very vague comment. But if you're doing something that people think that you can't, it's fun. It has to be high enough to be featured by Apple. Now, what is important to the feature team? Well, the first time I met with the App Store Games Division, I asked them this question. And they said that they were looking for extremely polished games. And publishers know this. This means you have to not only finish your game, but polish, polish, and polish until it's perfect. Uh, we used to call that uh, I don't think most solid. Understand uh. this part completely because you can't just do this 80%. It's got to be 110%. It's what separates the amateurs from the professionals. 
You have to be able to play your game. And <laughs> you stay thirsty. That didn't feel 100 correct. You nailed it. Right. That is exactly that what's going on. Enemy level character movement. Atmosphere. That is exactly. That is exactly a great description. And like Tony Robbins, Trey Smith is very successful. Probably wealthier than all of us combined. I mean, he owns BuildBox. He paid for it. the development out of his own money. The game must flow extremely well, and it must be effortless to play. And when you have probably shouldn't have thrown you guys in that pool. I was just trying to. You were going to have it. Absolutely hate your game, and that is okay. Because at that point, it'll be ready to submit to publishers. When are you done? When you hate it. A featured worthy game. All right. Even if it's a minimal. Did I clip game, out? It's not easy, but it's very, very rewarding. You'll have a lot of confidence in your game. You'll really believe. Stay thirsty, my friend. At this point, and you'll almost be surprised if it doesn't get published. So now let's check out how you'll send this game. To all right, publisher. chapter all right, three. So pitch. pitch. Successfully emailing your game to a publisher. I want to see so this. Listen, guys, I'm going to level with you. Publishers get about a hundred games per day sent to them, so they try to look at as many of these as possible. But it's impossible for each publisher to see them all. So I'm going to show you how we got our game seen by publishers before we knew them. Okay. But this is a tough one, and there are no guarantees here. Your best option, if possible, is to get an introduction. The game business, like many other businesses, works a lot on handshakes. So I do strongly recommend making it out to conferences, getting to know people, etc. And of course, you need to be able to make good games. Every introduction in the world won't matter if the game isn't up to speed. But don't lose hope. Even if you're not the social type, I got my games initially published without shaking any hands. Here's how I did it. All right, so how to submit your game to a publisher. Step one. Always keep emails short and sweet. Listen, guys, if you send an email to someone you want to do business with who has a business bigger than yours, always keep it short and sweet. Anyone's attention you want to get. Even at Billbox, we get a lot of emails that are super long. They rarely get read unless it's to support Ouch. the key members in the organization because people are busy. All right, these publishers are getting 100 emails per day. You got their attention if they open that email for about five seconds. Keep it short and sweet. Include a video of your game and no more than three pictures. Again, we just want to hit all the points that they want to see real fast. From your research, quickly explain why the game will work for them in no more than two sentences. Use bananatag.com to track opens and responses. So first, let me show you an example. Banana tag. Banana tag. I used so uh, HubSpot. Example, Is that a better? A super awesome publisher from Trey Smith. Subject, Mini Van Tan, which is going to be the game we're creating here. Hi, publisher name. My name is Trey, and I'm from an indie studio in California. We created a new game I think you guys might be interested in. YouTube link there. You can see some screenshots below, but we created this specifically for a publisher name. We chose color palettes, landscape gameplay, and scrolling backgrounds because it seems those games have been doing well. Thanks, Trey Smith. That's a solid email a publisher would love to get. It gets straight to the point. It doesn't waste their time, and it has all pertinent Boom. information. So note, please do not copy this word for word. Please do not do that. People have done stuff like this in the past when I've had a training event and I've showed an email example, and it ends up looking really, really weird. Actually, he would tell you if you, like in that, a future that, system, to copy it word for word. And that's not good. So do this. If you want to model that, don't go back. Don't watch that again. Don't screenshot that or attempt to find a recording so you can find out exactly what I said. Just take the inspiration from it, okay? So this is to give you an example Asterisk. of how an email should look. Most importantly, that's to funny. show you the brevity of these emails. That's the big important part. When you are reading mm -hmm. hundreds of emails per day, it's very important that they get to the point. So the easiest way to get passed over is to write more than what I did above. Now let's talk about banana tag. This is easy. It's just open tracking for Gmail. It's a Chrome extension plugin. You install this plugin. I use HubSpot. Do you guys know how this works? I think I do. That you send. From your Gmail account, you'll get a notification. You can actually decide I think when you actually track this. So anytime you send, it puts an image, an uh, invisible thing on the email, this email, and then, you'll and then it, they open it opens a URL. On any links, all right? And that's what cool. up, that's how Mike? You find out if they're seeing it. Uh, everyone's gonna have time to reply. And it's a good way. To I'm not sure what he's selling. At the uh, end, it'll it'll be at the end, and it'll cost ten grand. Days, but then, um, the information he shares on the way up to there. I, I found so useful. Bonus with banana tag is you can this is Trey Smith. Subject lines in your email. 
find out what works better over time. You know, just try a few different things and notice if something seems to work better mm -hmm. than something else and find out what gets... We got to, like, rate. find tools and to fight that. Sometimes, having a hard time reaching publishers, I mean, if, if, if you don't know when you open an email that they're notified, like, that kind of sucks. ...get guaranteed views of their game. So more about that in a minute. So that's emailing. Easier said than done, but these tips can definitely help you get seen in a sea of... Pretty good tips. Now, the final part is to repeat. You want to build relationships. And guys, this is extremely powerful. This is what can cause your business to be truly sustainable. And that is really important. With any of the other options out there, like ASO, you never know if they're going to work tomorrow. If you're buying traffic to your games, you're only dependent on that traffic source selling you traffic for cheap. We all saw that happen in 2011. But when you're depending on multiple publishers to be your marketing power behind your games, if you have good yeah. relationships with those guys, and if you can work with them, and when you create games, pretty much know they're going to be signed before they're even finished, then you've created a sustainable business. Okay, so this is where we get hate that tracking crap. business aspect of the training. While everything we discussed so far can get you a publishing deal, this section is what can build an ongoing and Bonozo, fortunately, knows the repeat lesson. Uh, okay. Our biggest customers the last year have been literally repeated customers. They came back for larger projects. And to do this, you need to build a solid relationship with your publishers. We'll do this in three phases. The first part of building publisher relationships is I agree. You want to earn their respect. I just set my okay. browsers to so delete all cookies on my phone and computer again for the publisher yesterday, the respect, actually. Right? Yeah, literally now, day yesterday. First off, you're always available. Day you're before. Be dealing with a lot of flighty people, okay? Just human nature. A lot of the people they're going to deal with, they're not going to deliver stuff on time. We're always available. You always over-deliver. When a publisher asks you to create a feature in your game, you don't just do the bare minimum. You say, that's a great idea. You know what? We even tried something to make it even cooler. All right? You want to always over-deliver. You always beat time estimates. You don't tell them that you're going to have something ready in two weeks and then deliver it in three months. <sighs> All right? That's not professional. That's They're a hard one. To deal with you. Instead, you say it's going to be ready in two weeks. That kind of takes it. money. You know, maybe a day or two early. No one's expecting Depends. to work a miracle here. But you got to be responsible. they got to see that. Brave Browser? Oh, I like the name of that. Mistakes got to own up to it. You can't be a prima donna in this business when you're working with publishers. And you never ask for more than you give. Remember, there's a lot more developers out there than publishers. You need them more than they need you. So be respectful. I'll try it. I use Epic. Right, so then you uh, I'll try that. Relationship. You're going to do this by finding out what is working. By talking to them about, hey, we're thinking about the next game. What's working here? Learn what they are wanting. They'll tell you once you increase this relationship with them. Hey, what are you guys thinking about? For the next six months, what trends are you seeing? Share your what up, crazy 420 things to the table. Share yeah, them, hey, look, we analyze all the top games and we're seeing this. You guys agree with this? Help them in different ways. If you see any other way you can help them out, do that in their business. Say, hey, look, you know, if you guys need a support person, I happen to know someone. He talked really about know. that in the very beginning, Mike. Uh, you, can. you meet other he talked about people in the industry. Why Let them know. Say, hey, I just had dinner with so and so. If you guys want an introduction, never let he me He said know. publishers serve the purpose of Apple curation or whatever. Increase your business potential, okay? Let them know that you're here for the long run and you're ready to do whatever it takes. Maybe you can get a special deal going with them. Maybe you can get something where they are working with celebrities or working with some tie-ins with music or who knows, right? Just make sure to explore all the potentials that are possible once your relationship is increased. It's not hard, yet so many people drop the ball on this. Basically, be the absolute coolest developer they have ever had on their roster. Always be assisting, but never annoying. And of course, use research. Yeah, and he talked about them too. He said those guys suck. To consistently turn out hit games for them. You <laughs> would be very surprised at how many people in this industry really don't know what they're doing. They're not basing anything on- No, games. I think I do and I have a good idea. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So it's a real rarity in the industry. Let's go on the app store. To the details and can provide information on that. People really value that. All right, guys, so that's the short of it. Obviously, there's a lot more to the process, but that's the start of how we get our games published. 
And if you do want to learn more and you want to take this to the next level, then you might want to listen to this because we're doing something pretty interesting. Here's the offer. Here's the pitch. And then he's going to repeat. He analyzed, created, and now is pitching. Get your games published in a really big way. Oh, no. He's going to be a publisher. We actually have done this, and it works really well. The last time I did it, I worked with 52 people to get their games signed. I worked with these guys for one year. And we could have oh, he's gonna help you for a year at uh, ten grand. You give him ten grand. Twenty-five deals in six months. We got deals done with every major publisher from Catch App to Game Loft to Voodoo, Absolute, and Innovation, and more. And we even helped put together a unicorn game. Someone from this group. You probably played this game. It was enormous. The guy literally made over a million dollars with this game. So because the thing is, though, it's real. Like. For a limited Trey time. is it's not someone to bet game. against. He is create great art. Build he's successful. And of course, exactly how he's got a great design. reputation but overall. Go a step further. We go even considering how you'll have me not only teaching you, right? Uh, so you know what to do personally. How infomercial you know, he comes off. We do with stuff like he's a he's like a brilliant guy. How you can improve. I know like, it's what hard. What should do next? You know, I mean, a lot of times I feel like people stop. Yeah. Because they get to this point, they just don't know like the next it, thing to do. It, All right. You publishception. Publish, you email us, and then we'll. Oh, I was working with one of these companies last year like this. Uh, they actually got us uh, a publisher. Uh, uh, it works. Uh, forgot the name of them. I'll actually be emailing them and going, "Hey, look, this guy over here made a great game." I'll probably never remember their name. Here's why I think this would work good under your label. So this is a we hired a company to know. get us a publisher, and they around, did. This is a little bit different. So introducing Publisher Elite X. I started this because there's a problem in the mobile game market. And the problem is game creators are having a hard time getting publishers' attention. If you've ever emailed a game to a publisher, you know this firsthand. And publishers are having a hard time finding the diamond in the rough. Well, he's game. saying that the and publisher the movement is coming back. That, He's right? saying that Apple the Apple well, publisher wants publishers because there's too much app. crap. And in Publisher Elite X will be created. That's what he's saying. And, and this happened polishing. And even in my games era of games, my first era. So I, I've seen that road. And then there's actually another stage, which is the worst one, where everyone loses money. That's how that era ended. <laughs> Eventually, everyone failed. In the industry to make this happen. Including Ketchup, yeah. Spotify, Absolute, Chilingo, Voodoo. Though like, a lot of games now, it's hard to tell the app. But app phones are really powerful. All of these guys are on board with this. There's, There's a lot of games that really kind of like could be on either platform. Exactly and you wouldn't know the difference really. We're helping them. Find I'm sure you must have played some. All of these publishers will be at your disposal when you finalize your game. Now, if there's one did I did I miss publishers? God damn it! That's great. You need to let me know early on so we can plan for that. And that's how we got a lot of the deals done in the previous one. Someone would say, "Look, I really want to be with Voodoo." I'd say, "Okay, well, Voodoo's looking for these types." I don't of know the Fortnite publishing there, story. Et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know. Here's it. how all this will work, guys. This is Publisher Elite X. It's broken down to a few different sections. Is that a function? It starts off with six modules of in-depth training. Now, these modules are all taught by me personally. It's over six hours of training that goes over every part of building a game business. What? We start with the game idea all the way through level design, creating art for your games, and I'll show you exactly how I create I gotta for my games. I got to sit through 40 so an artist hours. And more. It's 40 videos, and it has everything that you need to build a <laughs> successful game company. I literally took everything that I've learned over the past 10 years and put it into I just want to see the price. And this was a huge It's going to be $10,000, $2500 off uh, if you order today. About how this really showed them a lot of things they didn't know about building a game business. Then also, you get a year long of Oh, gotcha. Support. And this is both from me personally and the Billbox team. We'll have a form nice. that you filled out if you're having an right. issue. If you have an issue that's with its game, strength you're not right sure exactly what to do right 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 you're a little bit confused you're not sure if it's fun maybe you think it's too hard too easy or you think the graphics aren't quite good enough you'll fill out this form and it'll go to myself and the bb team a lot of times you'll get a response back from me personally so trace had game his game play. phases has been on the app store for years look at these three games it's got like very successful and if you can model something like he that, makes games with build box he's got that phases game made like 50 million downloads publisher instead etc etc so you get this personalized support for a whole entire i've got no numbers like that box team <laughs> from myself 
helping you out not yet. with your game. And this is a big one. We don't want you to ever run into an obstacle and not know what to do next. So we really want to help you with that. Of course, a big part of this is the quarterly submissions. Every three months, we're going to submit your games to publishers for you. That's going to be done by me personally. I'm literally going to email, you know, Nanovation, Voodoo, Ketchup, whoever, and say, hey, look, you know, so this person made a game. I think it's really good. I've been working with them on this game, and I think this is going to be perfect for your publishing company. And you get a pitch uh, from me personally. And the cool thing about that is since we have deals worked out with all these... Trey is very connected, man. If you, if you could get on a first-name basis with them... For 100% sure, they're going to look it over. They were but I tell you, he's expensive. He costs so much money. He takes all that money and puts it in build box. And I think he pays for advertising. Because when I see those 50 million downloads, I'm like, man, that was not organic, dude. I, I'm pretty sure he buys a lot of ads. We're also going to have four live quarterly trend reporting events. These That's are probably three obvious. Months as well, every quarter. And this is going to go over what's changing and trending in the mobile market. This is huge. You know, it was like a year ago that every game you saw at the top of the App Store had a light background, mostly a white background. Now they're all black backgrounds. These are the type of trends I'm talking about. We'll see things go 3D and isometric for a while. Then we'll see things changing. We'll see games that are very reaction-based. Then we'll have trends that start coming through. And publishers will want games that have a little bit of RPG Please. elements where you level up a very simple character. We'll see all these different types of trends. And I'm talking to all these publishers constantly and finding out what they want. And I report that to you guys every three months because that's about the time things start to shift. So you know exactly what to focus on and you're creating games that publishers are going to like. Also, if I get an update and I know that Voodoo is now wanting this type of game or Absolute's going to want this type of game, I'll talk about that as well during these live events. And then finally, you get access to these exclusive Q&A sessions that I host. Uh, he was saying it was uh, cute character games uh, with uh, really cool. We're talking about pastel like pad palettes on dark icons. Guys like Actually, if you watch this video, that's, that's what I got Switch, out of it. Simon Crack, who has over 10 Apple features. And Kevin Weston, like, really Simon Crack. Who just absolutely you know, I just learned Total Biscuit died. Business. Uh, I mean, that's old news. I just learned that today. It was over six hours long, and I've never released them. I've never given them out to anyone except for the first publisher elite group. And you guys get that. Six hours of interviews where I'm asking them specifically, what are you looking for? Why do you sign some games and not other games? You know, and asking the developers, hey, how do you come up with this idea? Like, how did you come up with Color Switch? So it's really great. They've never been released. You get access to all of that as well. So as you Today, see, this, this video is from today. Program. You'll start with massive this is the very first time this video has ever been aired. It's today. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys. I, I wouldn't do that. Not anymore, at least. You get the good stuff. I mean, if Trey was your producer, that's basically... I mean, you, you'd have, the only thing is he'd make you use BuildBox. <laughs> Then for the 12 month period, we'll be personally helping you. Yeah, this is today. Every single quarter. And it's an amazing year long program, and you have plenty of time to create, build, polish. They'll probably explain that. Game. So let's go over everything in detail and start with the training modules. Each module will have a theme focused on a specific part of making your game. We'll start from the very beginning. So now it's getting a little. Aspect you need to make huh. a great, featured, worthy game. I've taken everything I've learned building this. I'm getting to the price, no matter what. I'm going. I want to hear this guy. Um, Mikeum Garcia, thank you so much for that follow. I have the alerts off today. Uh, I owe you an alert. Want to talk about how you've set yourself up. Thank you so much. How you set up your business. And welcome. So we have a strong foundation to build. To the top devs of Twitch dev. We'll first have your personal. Something like that. I'm going to go through that, then I'll show you the second section, and this is all in the first modules, multiple videos, all about getting you started. So first you have a welcome video from me, then we'll talk about fortifying your personal... I'll be explaining the future of the stream projects or whenever this guy gives me five you seconds to talk. Working. When I started my business, you I had a full-time job, I'm going to talk to you all the way down from the beginning here on how to manage that. Huh. I'm going to show you guys the pull shot method that I use for pull shot. I know a lot of times we have a hard time staying motivated. All right. I figured out a really good way to get around that and to constantly be motivated when I need to. I'm going to teach you that pull also, shot seven essential daily business habits that I do every single day. And that I think is a very big reason that we go snowboarding the game industry. Then the second part of this is going to be about process creation. 
first I'm going to talk about understanding industry infiltration, how to break <laughs> into a new industry. I've done this multiple times. It's really important to understand the yeah. process of doing this. It's pre-recorded, but this is a live stream. How you can spy and see what other companies are doing. It's the very first time. Traffic, how these publishers are actually getting all the downloads and then how people are getting games signed. Oh man, he is, this is his world. He loves this stuff. I think that's a very He loves this. Long-term success. And I'm going to talk to you and show you guys how I've done that, how I networked with people like Ketchup before they knew me, uh, the Temple Run guys, and many more. And then we're going to talk about advanced model and improve. You're going to hear me talk about model and improve a lot. I'm thinking really, 10 this grand. Is a major it's, reason that we've had success. And I'm he's going to charge 12,000 and really, sell it for eight. I swear. Watch. Books that he's I crazy. You must read if you want to be successful in business. These are the ones I go back to and reread and scan every single year. And I'll go over that as well. Uh, if there is a Why game dev Illuminati, Trey Smith and this is, is in it. Diving in a little bit deeper into the publisher realm. And we're or at least start off with puppeteered by them. Diagnostics. We have a bunch of videos on this. And we start off with an in-depth publisher discussion, discussing all the different publishers in depth. So you understand what each one is going to be looking for, how difficult each one is to get signed to and more. Yeah. Then we talk about the types of games what? you need to submit to yep. each Watch. publisher. It's really important. The types of games that we recommend making if you want to try to hit multiple publishers. Uh, and then your I don't of like success with any design. of Trey's Obviously, creative process. Get a lot more uh, games submitted to but than some of the other publishers. when it comes to lowering about, risk, he's the master, I'm give man. You my tailor-made recommendation based upon your skill level. The second part of the intelligence is about publisher research. I'm going to show you how to do advanced research on <laughs> publisher titles. Then I'm going to show you the download hacker method. This is oh, pretty cool. It's a way to find. Do you remember the ice bucket challenge? Pad. And this is. A you remember that? Trying to decide what type of. I sent mine when I got it you to Trey Smith. To model and improve. And you know what he did? Looking for them before you start. Nothing. Game what an ass. So you how to no. Do that. <laughs> no, he totally ignored me. I was like, fuck, man. No one else sent it to him. I was like, that are successful. He, he totally ignored me. <laughs> I was like, what? I know one of his best friends, Chad. I had so on this uh, stream before. The point where your game will be ready. Starting off I missed that. Moving into really studying publishers, and now we're talking mm. about building your game. This will also I should have done the repeat step. Sections. In the first section is idea and graphic idea. design. So we're going to talk about your game idea and exactly what you want to come up with, how we come up with game ideas, and how to come up with a game idea that publishers are going to actually like. This is important. You do not just come up with something you think is cool. You don't just start with a build box preset and just build off of that. We have a specific system for that. I go through it in detail. It's based on model and improve, and it's worked fantastic yeah, for us. Yeah, I know. Go to the app store, your copy it, make it better. And That's the system. Build method. How are you going to create your game? We've had some people use build box. Publisher elite classes use build box. We had some people who actually coded themselves. Some had full game teams, and other people didn't have anyone and hired programmers. We're going to talk about all those different ways and discuss them in detail. Then we talk about how to create art, even if you're you're not an artist i pride myself yeah no it's legit it's just some art and a lot of uh, our most successful games and then i kind of believe a different theory i think you everything else should be the only way games. you can so get the styles, I think you should all these out. things the polish quality fun uh on the trends all this stuff i actually feel like it has to have so the first soul thing I talk about is like game design like your soul Besto. exactly how we do game design it, and this is basically it has to have some kind of soul some kind of deep like experience we have creating nerdgasm like we love this kind of freaking game that's so, why we made you know, it you mentioned systematizing things a lot well in our game company i have documents that I actually create when we hire people new game developers that we give them i'm going to give that to you guys all right and this is how we literally build the games in our level then i'm going to show you main menu yeah. interface and user experience and then you don't have to that. calculate all that it kind of comes a little you're still gonna have some of the other problems he talked about where you could you don't like to get told the word no sometimes you know, and then of all the stuff design checklist that way when you're finished with your game, you make sure you have all the most important game design parts. manifesto. You can fun, fun, fun. This multiple times. This is something you might want to print out, keep on your desk to remember. You have to have all these things before you actually finish your game. Now, module four, we're getting more. Like, tell me, Skyrim was not made out of like D and D diehards. A little bit closer to being. Finished. I mean, tell me. This is called the countermeasures. We're gonna start off. Because Skyrim is kind of like one of my favorite games. That's why I brought it up. With publishers. 
I'm going to show you guys a very simple secret on how to never get turned down. What's your favorite game, Skyrim? Oh, you're so fucking and it predictable. Well. We've had more deals done with Catch App. I also like uh, and any other Naughty Dog. We've never had a game turned down from them. All right, we're working with it. other publishers as well. we got a lot coming out this year. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do this and never get turned down when you submit a game. It's actually simpler than you think. Then I'm going to talk about publisher relations one-on-one, -on -one, how you can build amazing relationships with publishers. I'm going to also show you what publishers <laughs> I don't know what it is. see in your game, what they're going to be looking for. At and another time, I'd Google it and that's going play to be very it. Important. They want their games to go viral, and you have to have that set up for them. And then also, I think I've seen the witness on Steam. Analyzing your gameplay with the publisher in mind. Then the second section for the countermeasures is about polishing and monetization. We're going to talk about the polishing process and what I call the bird's eye view. If you worked with me, if you were here in the Build Box offices, you would hear me talking about this bird's eye view all the time. You probably get sick of it. Ah, it's probably the biggest with the uh, in my life. Talk about this in the foundation. What up, side? You take. I'll talk about I bet a bunch of people out there want to give you a little high five. It's really important. It's about really just looking at things from 500 feet in the air instead of being caught in the middle of something, in the middle of the ground. I want to read that out loud. And we go over that in detail. Then I'll talk about play testing and preparation, how you can play test. What if Nike make games, games, eh? People they produce souls using the souls of starving kids equals soulception. Definitely want to take data and we can change based on that. No, it's funny you say that because in a weird way making your game viral like and finalizing your game sneaker heads and all that is kind of like made by Nike. Like Nike's running like the biggest freaking game in a weird way. And the first section like, is literally how to pitch publishers. So here's oh my gosh, here. Nike is a big is game company. Basketball, then the second section football. Of this module is all about what we're going to They're do a before. huge game right? company. I want you guys to be fully armed to the teeth, though. I saw some Nike AR products. today. I want you to still know how to go out and pitch publishers. See if I have it. This worked extremely well. We had one customer named Michael Roberts, and it's pretty amazing. This guy, he was like, you know what? I don't want you to submit any games for me. I want to learn how to do this on my own. So he took this module five, and he got three three deals done on his own without us, which uh, I thought was a little crazy because we were literally going to make the introductions for him, but he um, he really wanted to do it on his own, and he did. So this is really important because we're going to be around for one year to help you out, but I want you guys to be prepared for the whole future. So the first thing with how to pitch publishers... I actually just looked at that a couple hours ago. Evaluation discussion. Then I'm going to give you guys a pre-charge uh, checklist. That means before you charge forward, it's pretty badass. You go and submit your games. Those are pictures. those models of the shoes were taken, we're made out of rotating cameras. Solo. We're going to talk about creating the. What's that called? Photo video. stitching or something? Important to have a great trailer. That's what's going to sell your game more than screenshots or anything. And then the perfect pitch. I'm actually going to show you guys specific emails I use, including the first email I ever used to pitch Catch App. You can paste your and blog link. What it said. They had no clue who I yes. was. Yes. Thank with you. Box I think that's it. Even out at the yes. Time. I'm going to show you guys that's a pretty big field uh then of course, i haven't used any of those tools but that's like a big field like there's like six major tools give you my doing a recommendations on where to start how to get the publisher you want right from the beginning verified views explain i'm going to show you exactly how we're, we're hanging on for the, for the price we can verify and make sure does anyone want to start guessing that we submit to i probably like skewed the range i'm saying it's going to be before you submit a game to me a grand publisher, okay? so but a prop make sure you have all the things checked out there so i'm not would going you a bunch of games i that swear it's going to be like so you'll get that checklist as well all right then the final module oh, guys man. this is about i'm probably high level which we've done we've done over it's going to be uh million dollars no it's, it's going to be business. one to two grand a month over watch million downloads watch and a lot of it he's going to do all the things that you've learned so 6.99 a month five but six is about going to that next level 6k so zaka talk about becoming multi-published how to grow publisher relations, get multiple publishing deals with multiple different publishers, about releasing multiple games, building a system around this, building... You're thinking 2K. Bids on 2K. Getting special opportunities. I'll stick with my 8 just games. to be out there. Publishers you'll be seeing coming out very soon. Kostax is at 3K. I can feel that. A nice $2,500 price. Industry mover. We actually oh, yeah. 10K plus... To Billbox, a whole separate company, right? And I'm going to talk to you. And it's going to be interesting if he offers royalties of for happened, himself. How it started with a website called Game Academy and more. All right. So this growth section. I know about his Game really Academy. Entrepreneur journey. 
and you're going to see exactly how we got to where we are now. Then we're going to talk about specific okay, cool. your company, how to master. Uh, I want to do a uh, social media. We test of FOMO grammars. Is that a way I can make some cool models? Virtual assistants. So you know, I started all of this with one employee from the Philippines. I'm going to talk to you about that. Um, and her name is Diane. She's awesome. I'm going to tell you all about her. Then He's told us that story. You know, as you know, I'm really big. I think he sleeps with her now. About how I come up with these systems and streamline them and then outsourced. He gets methods. massages. I'm going to give you all of the training documents I have created oh, no. for Buildbox staff to go hire outsourced people for their departments. And then I'm going to show you guys how to scale when you're ready, actually build a real company around this, hiring people and even show you our org chart and more. So as you can see, guys, the training covers every aspect of building a published game. You want again? This is Trey Smith. That's him. He looks like Sean White. And even a lot more. All the he is to creating pretty the much the one of the most powerful, successful ASO app store optimization people. I've done from the beginning in, my in the United business. States. So the training is the core foundation for Publisher Elite, and it's backed by four other key features of this program. We have Oh, that's cool. Access and premium support. Yeah, be, don't bet against no Unity, man. Those guys are balling. Dude, that company, I think in like two years, we won't even recognize it anymore. I wouldn't be surprised they scrap this engine and come out with a whole new one. They are they are on all cylinders. Their feet are glued to the floor. They got rocket jet engines. I don't know how to explain it. They are all on. I don't. I have a feeling they're going to redo that platform uh, in no time. I'm going to do this with the build box staff. We're going to reply and let you know if we think the game idea. That's a pretty bold. Uh, tweak it. Some ideas for graphics and more. Then we'll create a specific a bold, uh, roadmap for your prediction. game. We're going to give you and show you what to focus oh, on. Oh, thank you, Sam. During every submission process, every quarter, we'll get an update on your games and provide feedback on what you should be focusing on. Every quarter? On. i got to wait a now, year? we we'll also get additional ongoing premium support that's unlimited for oh, one cool. whole year. You can email in. Everyone almost in the company Thanks. comes with a game. I, I got that link. Oh, nice. And of course, me as well to support you. I'll check that out uh, later. Into getting your game signed. The real goal here, guys, is to bypass any roadblock or obstacle that you cross. We've seen this a lot working with developers over the years. A lot of times it's just one simple thing. They don't know what to do next. So the goal with this personal access... It's a good attitude. For you never the whole get up. What do I need to do next? And you get knocked down. And I mentioned that we had these live expert Q&A sessions that were great. You're going to get access to them. They're Q&A sessions from famous developers and publishers from our previous Publisher Elite sessions. They're actually all from the first one. You'll learn exactly what publishers want from the founders of major publishing companies themselves, like Zeb Jaffer from Fortify, Ari Silverman from Manifation, and David Zilberfane from Absolute and more. You'll also hear from rock star developers like David Reichel, who made Color Switch, and Simon Crack from Dead Cool. Dead Cool Ass. Oh, that's a cool ass name. That's not like something I would be into. You guys play any of their games? Shizzle. Simon Crack. His name's Simon Crack. Oh, wow. Trend report meetings. Every three months, we'll all gather for a private online event. And I'll yeah, that was it, the grammar. Right. I was thinking, like, drive through it. Uh, uh. And I'll tell you what changes we're making in our game company. These things change fast in the app world, but you'll be on target with these quarterly reports. Quarterly? Right, finally, Every three months? Quarterly publisher submissions, all right? Probably the most important part. When you join Publisher Elite X, you get access to quarterly publisher submissions for a full year. All right, that means at the end of each quarter, every three months, if your game is ready, I will personally send it to a publisher that we've agreed on. And this is important. It does say if your game is ready, we obviously can't send unfinished games. That's how all of this works. The publishers are excited to see what we're going to send them because they know it's going to have my stamp of approval. But I'll make sure. And that's his you know explanation why you need a publisher. It's an automatic how you need to change curation process. We also do not take any. I love his way of explaining it. He says that all industries eventually grow to that level. I love that. And we're completely out of your business. I thought it was a good way to so say you it. You can send a game every single quarter, so you literally have four opportunities here if you make four good games. And listen, if oh. you don't know what a good game is, that's a big part of this program. You will know after going through the training, after talking with our support, after getting feedback from me, 
you'll know what it Did takes he? and we're going to make sure that you understand how to complete that goal and create a game that's good enough to pitch all right guys so that's publisher elite a complete suite of training expert q a sessions drum roll personal consultation publisher submissions by me personally and more. if you use build box you can program ever created for game developers and the publishers absolutely uh love and the answer to that question i would probably say no innovation <laughs> Hey, Trey, just wanted to send a thing. I you think, know, once again, no, you'd have to, you could do like a, a DLC, maybe, like a, oh, like a, a 0.5 update, update. like, I don't, I mean, no, that was totally unsolicited. It, no, it depends when you calculate when you start, I guess. I mean, I've seen games, like just so yesterday we talked about Shaq Fu, I think was made in a month, but is that a good game? No. That I've ever offered. And it's worked out extremely well for both no, the developers and the publishers. In fact, a lot of people, guys, actually built really big businesses. Off and I did work with the meta publisher, like, again, on Crystals of Fate, and that worked out really well. They they did find a publisher. It was a, it was a no-risk deal. However, the final result was earth-shattering. They wanted to completely, they wanted us to redo all the art. As mentioned earlier, for an even more affordable price. So they, speaking of, let's discuss the price. That's another story for another stream. Now the original but, publisher elite cost seven thousand right. dollars, and it was a huge success. We sold. You guys are already winning. He's gonna start high and go low. So I would say he's gonna come down to five to twenty-five hundred. Something just as effective, but also good job, everybody. So the cost of publisher elite. Oh, who got that? And the winner. And that includes everything, the training, the consulting, support. Mike, process, our new follower, publisher submissions and won the and course, Bid the Trey Smith percentage of your game from you <laughs> program. Congratulations. And the ownership of the game, you own everything you create, and we're not involved in the finance. What up, ACP? Help you get the game published. Also, we have some discounts. Uh, the Mega Drive? Who order yeah, that one, I, I don't know if you were just jerking my leg or whatever, but yeah, that one's better, definitely. Definitely. Are going to get five hundred dollars off. This will make the price for them only one thousand four hundred and nine. I will fix the audio um, on upcoming streams. I it's kind of my fault. This will make the price one thousand. I won't get excited. And then everyone else will have to pay the full price. Yeah, yeah, very good job, Gosa. Oh, now to be clear, all oh, it's actually a little bit less. It's actually fifteen hundred. Really, this is a scam. He'll take your fifteen hundred any day of the year. Trust me. To limit the program. Fifteen hundred bucks, but we'll stick with the. Uh, absolutely cannot overfill, and if we did, we'd have too many games to submit to publishers, and we can't let that. Happen. Must act now. So we decided a great way to limit this is by rewarding members who take action first. So after we hit this full price, we'll be closing orders soon after. Now the goal with this pricing was simple. We want you to recoup your investment on the very first game that you get. Trey to. is not the infomercial part. of app price, gaming, man. He is. Goal to hit. So He's the best. He is the best. $500 discount. Click on the button on the right hand side or head over right. to publisherelite.com. That's that. All right, guys, so that's Publisher Elite <sighs> X. It's the only program ever created that will hold your hand through every step of the process. And that's his pro product uh, build box. Okay, so here's what's going on. That is the uh, end of the show. My green screen today is janky. But we'll give you a little update what's been going on. Basically, we're going to be Topcaster-centric on these streams. And Mr. Ogum, if you don't remember him, who's done a lot of gameplay on it, is cleaning it up. And as soon as that's ready, we got a hit list of the things we want to talk about. The new art style. Uh, that's been going on in the Discord. Been talking with Sintasu about it. Um, I'm trying to find out if we have the... The strength, God, that green screen is. Uh, if, if we could, if we're strong enough to make it moddable, my my goal, and it kind of goes into what Trey was saying about the retention. A brawler on its own has like, I mean, I don't know what kind of a genius design it would take to make that have retention. But if we could make it that other people could put in their own streamers as bosses, um, one way or another, I don't know any way we could do that. That's mega retention, right? Plus, it takes a lot of pressure off us on getting graphics and and um, uh, copyright stuff. 
you know, like fedoras. <laughs> so, like, that's mega win, win, win. But that's kind of hard to do because Unity, Unity is as awesome as it is. When it comes to a couple things, modding being one of them, it blows. And you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm willing to stand behind that. It's just total junk at modding. <laughs> so we have to deal with it. Oh, yeah, we'll get... <laughs> and uh, what were some other things we want to tackle? I'm trying to go... I really want to propose to you guys about the idea of making the game specifically for kids. Like, like... I don't know. I think we we I just think we do really well there. I just think if we just know our market is like 10 to 15 or whatever those numbers are, we'll trace Smith it and analyze it, but I think if we just say that's our market and stop worrying about what all the late 20 year olds uh I, I just think that's what we got to do. I really but again, I'll be it's just going to open it for discussion. And uh I could throw a couple things uh, my goal after kind of taking a year off of streaming is uh, I'm, I want to do most streams in about 90 minutes. And I know if we get pretty serious, that won't work for everyone's schedule. Um, though this slot here isn't that bad, it seems like. So in the older days, how I solved this problem is I would stream for 10 hours so that everyone could get off work, whatever they had to do. And I don't think I'm going to be able to, I don't, I don't think I'm going to rely on that as much. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to ease into it. You're going to ease into it. A lot of you are probably here to share your products uh, more than a part. But we're going to be kind of top caster centric. We've just gotten too many requests for the game. Like, this entire time, it's uh, people want to play it, work on it, get an update. It's just been nonstop. And I think, I bet you in your own soul, you could feel the demand for it is like even to this day increasing. You can feel it. I could feel it, and um, that's about it. Also, another thing new, uh, I'm going to be just like cutting off the show with a lot less notice, <laughs> and that's it. Thank you, everybody, and please get that Discord link. See you soon.